kwa sababu tumerauka tumewacha vitanda vetu ili tuweze kupata mwelekeo wa yale maswali ibuka na sisi wengine ambao hatukuweza kupendekeza maswali tuweze kupeana maswali juu ya maswali ambayo tayari yalikuwa yameulizwa na mimi leo ni niseme kwamba sitakubaliana na maseneta wenzangu kwa sababu mawaziri ambao hawakuweza kufika hapa ni mawaziri watatu lakini kidole cha lawama kimenyoshewa tu waziri ambaye anatokea katika mkoa wa Pwani Bwana speaker ni jambo la kutamausha kuona ya kwamba sisi watu wa Pwani haswa viongozi huwa tunaangaliwa tu kama njia moja ya kuweza kufutia miguu mambo yote ni mara kadha mawaziri wamekuwa wakiitwa hapa na hawafiki lakini sioni ni kwa nini kila mtu anamnyoshea kidole cha lawama dadangu kiongozi ambaye anatoka katika mkoa wa Pwani kwani yeye si binadamu oh, ama si kiongozi ambaye anaweza kufikwa na dharura point of order senator mandago senator miraja skilled what is the point of order senator mandago mheshimiwa speaker ni haki seneta miraji kudai kwamba wa pwani wanaangaliwa kwa seneta mandago ni kanuni gani ya kudumu ambayo unataka kuitumia katika hoja statement of facts na one of five ujue kwamba ukichagua kuzungumza lugha ya Kiswahili itabidi uende mheshimiwa speaker wewe ndio umenichanganya ni haki eh, senator Miraj kudai ya kuwa watu wa pwani wanaangaliliwa um, wanaonewa kwa ku, uh, kwa njia kufutia miguu ile hali katika serikali hii mheshimiwa speaker wewe mwenyewe ni speaker ya seneti ambaye ni chumba ambaye ni hapa house katika bunge waziri Aisha Juma mheshimiwa speaker ni baadhi ya wale wa mama wachache wameteuliwa kwa hii serikali Mheshimiwa Speaker Seneta Miraj mwenyewe amenominatiwa kuwa kwenye hii bunge Mheshimiwa Speaker atoe utafiti Seneta Mandelese tafadhali tumia Kiswahili sanifu siku nyingine Hakuna hakuna kitu kama nominatiwa ameteuliwa Am, ameteuliwa Mheshimiwa Speaker Kwa hivyo je ni haki eh, Seneta Miraj kudai haya madai ambayo ameweka kwenye chumba hii ya Seneti uh, Seneta Miraj. Ah, yes. Bwana speaker yangu si... kuna kuna hoja nidhamu nyingine hapa uh, Seneta Miraj. Mr. Speaker, I rise under Constitution Article 152 4A because there is assertion that Senator Miraj has stated that the reason Sen uh, Mheshimiwa uh, Honorable Aisha Jumwa says she is being targeted because she comes from coast is is very unfortunate statement because according to article 152 4A each person appointed as a cabinet secretary A assumes office by swearing or affirming faithfulness to the people and the republic of Kenya and obedience to this constitution before the president and in accordance with the third schedule as provided by the constitution mr speaker is it in order for my good sister senator miraj abdullahi to assert and state that mr speaker that the reason cs aisha jumwa is being targeted because she comes from coast i think mr speaker the president appointed cs i mean aisha jumwa out of competency and meritocracy It was not because she comes from coast it is because we believe that she would perform as a cabinet secretary mr speaker can she withdraw because it will not look very good in the our answer and also before the eyes of kenyans because we don't want to see any css through the eyes of regions or tribe or ethnicity or religion they come from mr speaker senator miraj uh, certainly you uh, statement is out of order in fact it goes to impute improper motive on your colleagues that uh, the reason why they are raising their concerns why the minister is not present is solely because she's from the coast kindly proceed to withdraw that asante bwana speaker labda kiswahili changu ndo kimewakanganya
wacha niendelee tafadhali bwana nilinde ndio nasema na natoa na, na kauli hiyo na naomba msamaha ikiwa hivyo ndio nilivyoeleweka lakini nikiendelea katika <laughs> kutoa hisia zangu ni kwamba bwana speaker mawaziri wote wameandika barua na kweli nakubaliana na bunge hili kwamba waziri Aisha ameandika barua kuchelewa lakini katika kauli za maseneta wenzangu walipokuwa wamesimama kuzungumzia kutamaushwa kwao hakuna hata mmoja ambaye amekupa wewe rai ya kuweza kumtafuta waziri na kumuuliza ni kitu gani haswa ambacho kimemfanya yeye asiweze kufika leo hapa wameweza kuwaelewa mawaziri wengine na wakakubali zile changamoto ambazo wamesema wako nazo lakini kwa nini iwe ni waziri Aisha peke yake na ni mawaziri watatu ambao sote tumerauka ili kuja kuuliza maswali na maswala ya jinsia waziri ni maswala ya kila mtu si maswala ya jinsia ya kike peke yake kweli tulitamaushwa na yale yaliyoendelea katika ripoti ya Nadco lakini ilibainika wazi ya kwamba viongozi wa kike tulikwenda kupitia majopo tofauti tofauti na tukapeana hisia zetu lakini komitia ya Nadco wenyewe waliamua kwamba watawachia majukumu hayo wizara na ile kamati ambayo aliibuni ili waweze kupea mwelekeo sahihi ambao wanautaka. Kwa hivyo nataka kusema katika bunge hili la seneti ya kwamba waziri Aisha Jumwa hakuna mkono wowote ama lengo lolote la kuweza kuondoa azma ya wanawake kuafikia jinsia ya selusi tatu, selusi mbili katika katiba yetu ya Kenya. Honorable, na ningependa pia Miraj, uh, late uh, the honorable Sias when she appears to be able to shed light on that subject because we are not here to defend any CS and the information you are giving it's better given by the CS herself and she appears next have you concluded your remarks thank you senator miraj senator wafula Asante mheshimiwa speaker kwa nafasi hii. Ah uh, mheshimiwa speaker ni jambo la kutamausha sana sisi kama maseneta kurauka asubuhi na mapema wengine kupuzilia mbali staftahi ili tuje tujadili mambo muhimu ya serikali na nchi ya Kenya. Mheshimiwa speaker baadhi ya mawaziri ambao wamealikwa hapa ni lazima wajue kwamba kuja kwao hapa kutapeana mwelekeo na suluhisho ama kupeana matumaini kwa wakenya. Mheshimiwa Rais amekuwa na zuru pembe mbalimbali za nchi ya Kenya akiahidi na kupeana mwelekeo kwa miradi ya maendeleo kwa wakenya. Na miradi hii ambayo yeye hupeana mwelekeo kwayo wale ambao lazima watekeleze ni mawaziri ambao wachache wao wamealikwa hapa na wamefeli kufika hapa. Waziri wa barabara na uchukuzi. Anajua fika jinsi Mheshimiwa Rais na viongozi kwa mfano wa mkoa magharibi hususan Bungoma tumekuwa tunadai na kuitisha uwepo wake mashinani. Ajione na aelewe ni sababu zipi zinashinikiza sisi kudai miradi ya maendeleo na barabara barabara ya msikoma kwenda mungazi barabara kutoka kakamega kuja msikoma barabara kutoka chole kwenda luahaha mheshimiwa spika ni lazima waziri huyu amke kutoka usingizi wa pono atembee wima na ajue Kenya tunalipa ushuru hatuta ngoja mheshimiwa rais azuru atuahidi peupe mchana na waziri amejifunga kwenye mahandaki akipora na kufurahia jasho la wakenya. Juzi nimeuliza maswali hapa mheshimiwa spika kuhusiana na mimba za mapema. What is the point of order Senator Mandoka? Uh, honorable speaker, is it in order for uh, the Senate? Uh, uh, please. Uh, understanding what one of five honorable speaker, is it in order for the senator for Bungoma to allege that the honorable cabinet secretary for roads is stealing and enjoying public resources in his office. Does he have evidence, Honorable Speaker? 
Senator Wafula, you certainly need to substantiate that allegation. Failure of which you may have to withdraw and apologize. Naomba kuondoa hoja hiyo na kushinikiza mheshimiwa speaker. Kwamba iwapo mfanyikazi ama waziri analipwa mshahara anaendeshwa kwa magari ya kifahari anatibiwa kwa pesa za mtoto za ushuru ile hali anayelipa ushuru hamuoni mtumishi wa umma popote katika kaunti hiyo na mtumishi huyu hajalalamika kwamba analishwa na kuvishwa na kuendeshwa vizuri bila shaka mheshimiwa speaker anafurahia jasho la wakenya mheshimiwa speaker waziri wa jinsia niliuliza maswali kuhusiana na mimba za mapema katika kaunti ya Bungoma kwa sababu ya upungufu wa sodo upungufu wa fedha za kuimarisha biashara za kina mama na wajane waziri huyu mpaka leo ameweka nta kwenye masikio na kinywa chake amekifunga kabisa tunajiuliza haya maswali kwa sababu tuli alichaguliwa kwa mrengo wa Kenya Kwanza na ni lazima adhirishe uwezo wake wa kuchapa kazi kwa kutembea pembe zote na kujadili masuala haya na wananchi wa Kenya na haya maswali mheshimiwa speaker yeye na waziri wa elimu lazima watembee pamoja kusuluhisha masuala ya mimba za mapema na masuala ya wanawake na watoto katika taasisi za elimu katika nchi ya Kenya sasa kile tunasema Sio kwamba tunaomba tafadhali waje, lazima waje. Na mimi niko tayari kujiunga na maseneta wengine. Kwamba kila mtu lazima wajibike. Mtu za ushuru anatoa jasho na kusaga meno kwa pesa anazotoa. Serikali inalazimisha watu walipe ushuru. Wale wanaochukua ushuru wanafurahi na kutupigia makofi kwa kulipa ushuru. Lakini tunapouliza wajibikaji wanatugeuka sisi wanasema hatuwaheshimu na hatuwapi nafasi mimi nasema kwa niaba ya watu wa Bungoma kwamba nitadai haki kwa watu wa Bungoma nitadai haki kwa wakenya ile serikali niliyoipigania na ninayoipigania ipate sifa na ishukuriwe kwa jasho na kwa kazi wanayofanya mheshimiwa speaker mawaziri hawa lazima waje asante na nashukuru senator mundigi Asanti bwana speaker kwa kunipa ruhusa niweze kuchangia mambo ya mbaye ya, wazi, ya mawaziri uh, wataka kufanya kazi kulingana na vile tulipitisha nataka nikumbushe mawaziri wote wakati bwana speaker tulikuwa na ngangana vile tutakuwa tukiwatarajia wa, tuki katika kikao hiki kulikuwa nifute na nifu, nifute na nifute kwa uh, asimio na serikali ya Kenya kwanza lakini hapo tukaweza kuwa tuliweza ku kusaksidi na tukawa tutakuwa tunawaita na sasa kwa kikao hiki tu kitu kimoja hakuna mgawanyiko na nataka kusema ametukosea asua mimi nikiwa ni senator wa Embu County ambaye siku ya leo ni siku kubwa katika Embu County ambaye governor wa Embu County mchapakazi amejikakamua na kuongea na eh, wale wafanyikazi ambaye ni wa county anaenda kwa kikao ya, ya parliament ya ya embu kuambia vile amefanya kazi kwa kipindi ya mwaka mmoja na sasa ni ahibu kubwa sana kama mimi sijahudhuria pale kwa sababu mnajua kwa hiyo kikao inavaa ni governor na senator vile kazi imefanyika kwa hiyo nataka kuambia uh, waziri wa wa parapara na usukuzi amefanya mambo ambaye si mazuri kwa sababu watu wa embu wa county kutoka makutano kwenda mwea kwenda embu eh, tharakanidhi mpaka uh, meru wanataka kujua parapara itapanua namna gani iwe kama zile zingine kwa sababu kama kuna county imetengwa ni county ya embu ya pili watu wa embu county walikuwa wameniambia nisikanyange pale mpaka nikuje hapa niulize mko men uwanja ya ndege atatunjegea lini kwa sababu watu wa embu wamekubali kulima tunalima mera na unaona mambo ya parapara imeleta sinda imekuwa uh, ni mambo ya ajali na wamekubali waesa kujekwa eh, kiwanja ndio tuweze kupeleka mira yetu huko ngambo ndio tuwe na pesa ambaye ni pesa mkononi na mambo ya asili vitu zingine pia walikuwa wamenituma uh, nikikuja leo niseme kutoka uh, karaba kwenda uh, makema na kwenda machanga hiyo vile parapara vile itatengenezwa iwekwe lami na pia kutoka kiritire kwenda karie na kwenda kiambere kwenda 
huko huko kiambere huko bali stima inatoka vile itawekwa lami na pia mpaka kwenda upande singine kwa hiyo eh, parapara hmm? waziri hayuko kusikia hayo yote malalamishi Sika angekuja hiyo ni maswahili yalikuwa yametumwa na watu wa Embu niwaulize. Sasa hayuko. Na hiyo na kama hayuko lakini amefanya amekosea watu wa Embu County. Sasa. Embu County ni sub county ile tungemuuliza hiyo maswali kwa sababu tunataka mke ambaye inakuja Embu iwe inatembea vizuri. Ya pili ni waziri wa fedha. Waziri wa fedha amekosea asua sisi ni wakubwa yake katika kikawiki ya Senate. Unajua bwana speaker nilikuwa nimejiandaa kumuuliza miaka tatu, miezi tatu ambaye eh, eh, senate eh, wafanyikazi wa mandrivers na security hawajalipwa pesa na alilipa alilipa uh, wafanyikazi wa bunge na pia unajua hii kama unjui bwana speaker ni miezi tatu mofisi yetu hajalipwa pesa na wasiri wa fedha hiyo ingine nilikuwa nataka nimuulize eh, kwa kipindi ya miaka mingi E, walimu walikuwa na sinda na mpaka saa hii tulienda tukafanya operesi sisi maseneta tukaona mtu akistahavu akiwa miaka sitini ile swali ningemuuliza e, e, anakuwa barua anapata haraka lakini e, unakuta tumefuatilia stress iko na sinda kwa hivyo hiyo ni maswali ningemuuliza kwa hivyo mimi naunga mkono e, vile au watu watashukuru hatua lakini mambo ya kuatimua a, siko hapo serikali ya Kenya kwanza aisemi mambo ya kutimuana ni mambo ya kuseme sana ndio tuweze kuona na vile serikali ya Kenya kwanza itava, itavanya kazi. Asante bwana speaker. Senator Cheptumo. Thank you Mr. Speaker. I also rise to heart my voice to um, what is being discussed Mr. Speaker. Article 124 of our constitution um mandates this house in the national assembly to establish committees and make standing orders for the orderly conduct of the proceedings of the house mr speaker therefore our standing orders as the full force of the constitution of kenya so that mr speaker the provisions of standing order 51 all the way to 51d as the full force of this constitution mr speaker this is the assembly of the national leader, the national leaders of our country elected nominated to deal with matters of concern to our counties and the county governments And how do we do so Mr Speaker we do so through the various um, structures in place including asking questions the, uh, the the CSS Mr Speaker it is important for us to realize that the institution that sought this house to amend the standing orders Mr Speaker is the president himself who requested both national assembly and senate to amend the, the to amend the standing orders so that the CSS are able to appear and answer questions of concern to our electorate Mr Speaker and so Mr Speaker it is paining and disappointing Mr Speaker that when the time and the date is scheduled for our cabinet to appear they don't and Mr Speaker I want to agree perhaps that there are situations where they write to you as our speaker giving just a bevel reasons why they should not appear. Mr. Speaker, it is indeed acceptable that a CS should be able to in good time be able to address the house why they are unable to to appear. But Mr. Speaker, my concern is that the trend is continuing to 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 a fail so that mr speaker my worry is that in some few you know as we proceed this avenue of these senators being able to use to 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 deal with matters of concern to their counties is going mr speaker to be to be um, di to to diminish mr speaker that particular 
standing order 51D or non attendance of cabinet secretaries, Mr. Speaker. The only punishment provided for there is to censor. And that is what uh, Senator um, Ocheng was raising. Mr. Speaker, I want to agree with the proposal that we might have to enhance about from censoring a government secretary, Mr. Speaker, let us enhance the punishment. And Mr. Speaker, when, when, when governors don't appear before committees of this house, Mr. Speaker, you know what they always do. They are supposed to pay a fine of 500,000, if I'm not wrong, Mr. Speaker. So it is important for this house, Mr. Speaker, to assert its authority on this position so that a, a fine of an amount that can be agreed by this house should be put in our standing order number 51D, Mr. Speaker, in addition to the provision of a censor, 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 moving a censor motion and to censor a cabinet secretary. Mr. Speaker, Baringo, for example, the county I come from, and indeed all the other counties, Mr. Speaker, we are facing a lot of challenges. And Mr. Speaker, I can, I can testify before the House that the questions we ask these CSS when they come here, Mr. Speaker, our people are keenly following, Mr. Speaker. And I am aware, even in my county, Mr. Speaker, sometimes the questions I ask here, when I go to the, to the county, the members of the public are able to say, yes, we saw you, we heard you asking this question. So, Mr. Speaker, the value, the value addition to our representation, the value addition to the, to, to, to the citizen of our country, Mr. Speaker, through this uh, procedure of cabinet ministers appearing before us, Mr. Speaker, is really, really important. And so, Mr. Speaker, I, I think my concern mainly is so what from today? What happens tomorrow? I think, Mr. Speaker, and I want to thank you because, Mr. Speaker, I have listened to you issuing uh, statements compelling and telling the cabinet secretaries to appear before the house. I think you have been very clear, and even the other house has been very clear. But I think what will make the CSS, Mr. Speaker, to appear here is when we enhance the fine from this censor only, censor motion proposed by Article uh, Standing Order 51D to uh, a situation where they can pay fines. Mr. Speaker, we have the capacity, we have the means. We have, Mr. Speaker, the opportunity as a House to implement this. And so, Mr. Speaker, I want to join my colleagues and, and say that um, it is important that you assert your authority as our Speaker and as a House so that, Mr. Speaker, we have a solution to this situation which is not enabling us to represent our people well, Mr. Speaker. So I join my colleagues in supporting that uh, position. Senator Mandago. Um, thank you very much, Honorable Speaker, for the opportunity to contribute in this. Honorable Speaker, um, first I want to join my colleagues in saying it is not in order for cabinet secretaries to absent themselves from answering questions in this House. Honorable Speaker, the purpose of this session was to make sure that the general public of the Republic of Kenya are able to get direct answers to their issues from the people responsible at the policy level, at the national government, and at the county level, Honorable Speaker. And therefore, Honorable Speaker, when cabinet secretaries fail to attend these sessions, they not only fail the Senate and Parliament, Honorable Speaker, but they also fail the people of Kenya. That notwithstanding, Honorable Speaker, this amendment that we brought to this House to allow cabinet secretaries to appear before us, Honorable Speaker, was a position that was developed by the Kenya Kwanzaa administration, led by our party leader, who is now the president of the Republic of Kenya, Honorable Speaker. And therefore, when cabinet secretaries fail to appear before this House, they are not only failing parliament, but they are also in subordinating the appointing authority, Honorable Speaker, because this was the position of the Kenya Kwanzaa administration, that the answers to the public can no longer be passed through many channels, but should come directly from the holders of the office so that the citizens can directly get from them. 
This would enable the people of Kenya, Honorable Speaker, when cabinet secretaries visit various parts of this country, to be able to refer them to the question and answers they give. Honorable Speaker, this evasion of cabinet secretaries from appearing, not only in this session, Honorable Speaker, but even before committees of parliament, must be firmly dealt with, and I concur with my colleagues that we must invoke the necessary powers of this House to make sure the attendance is observed. Honorable Speaker, for the Cabinet Secretary for Gender, Honorable Speaker, this House was very expectant to address the matter of gender parity uh, in government and also in Parliament, Honorable Speaker. This is a matter that has been canvassed in this country for over 30 years. There was only one opportunity available through NATCOM, Honorable Speaker, that this matter was going to be settled once and for all. I was eager myself to ask the Cabinet Secretary who removed the gender agenda from the NATCOM menu, Honorable Speaker, so that women leaders in this country should also not be going around saying we are fighting for women rights, we are representing women, but the very women are undermining the success of the women. No wonder, Honorable Speaker, the old adage says the enemy of women is actually women. And therefore, failing to appear before this House, the Cabinet Secretary for Gender has actually failed the women of this country. Because this was the opportunity for her to explain what our ministry is doing in order to make sure that that agenda is kept alive and that matter is settled once and for all because we have an administration that is keen to ensure women are involved in leadership and decision-making position in this country, Honorable Speaker. Finally, Honorable Speaker, as a House, I want to agree with my colleagues and even be persuaded further that the fines for an appearance should be enhanced. Honorable, Sotsi, uh, Honorable Speaker, I had proposed an amendment of increasing the fine to two million. I am now persuaded that it should even go to five million. This kind of contempt can only be met with a harsher punishment, Honorable Speaker. I support. No, Honorable Onyonka Richard. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I, I want to actually reiterate what my colleague, uh, Senator, from um, Senator Mandago, what he has been raising, the issue he has raised. Mr. Speaker, if you remember in 2000, I think, eight or nine, um, during that time I was at the National Assembly with you. And you remember when cabinet ministers, even Honorable Boni Haluale was there, and I remember Honorable Mungatana was there. Mr. Speaker, anybody who assumes that when a cabinet minister comes to make a presentation on a national matter, that maybe that minister could be wasting his time, or we who are going to listen to the contributions and discussions are actually wasting our time, is wrong. Mr. Speaker, the first thing is that the Kenyan public is interested in listening and hearing how the ministers are going to articulate government policy then they will be answering those questions which are critical because running a country, Mr. Speaker, frequent times you'll have crises, you'll have matters pertaining to emergencies and all that. And then sometimes, Mr. Speaker, that is the reason I wish many of the cabinet members in the KK government would understand that uh, them coming and answering this question first, they continue with uh, the historical president, and number two, the public is very curious and always constantly listening to what we say and what we, um, what we articulate in terms of trying to solve the issues that affect our country. Mr. Speaker, I really hope that uh, the CSS will take this House seriously, that they will in fact be, if need be, um, I, I plead that with my leader, Honra Chirarge, and uh, uh, the whip honorable uh, Halwale to make a, a phone call to the president and tell him his ministers are misbehaving. They are letting your government down. 
because we come here not because, Mr. Speaker, we are on holiday. We are dealing with matters of national importance. And when a cabinet minister comes, like the other day when Honorable Inturi came, Mr. Minister, I was very happy because you could see he's seized of the matters, he's discussing these matters intelligently, he is coming up, he's coming in with some solutions. That's, that's what we are looking for in our country, Mr. Speaker. We are not looking for drama and things which are irrelevant. And that's why I'm, I'm really pleading with the CSS and the uh, state officers who are being asked to come and attend these meetings. Because, Mr. Speaker, if you look at our committees, the, um, the CS finance, the uh, controller budget, the auditor general, uh, they, they are always coming. When we ask them to come, they come. And their record is extremely good. Why is it that the cabinet members of um, His Excellency William Ruto's government abdicating their responsibility? And uh, Mr. Speaker, I also want to plead through you and my colleagues who have access to His Excellency the President, tell him that uh, many of these ministers are actually just uh, randa randa doing nothing, they are going on trips. Let, uh, let them leave those things. Kenya has issues. Let them um, uh, settle down on the ground, let them intervene, let them come to our counties. Mr. Speaker, I have not seen a single CS in Kisi since I became a senator, except Moses Kuria. And yet, previously, the CSS need to move around the country. They need to come and see what is going on. What is the point of order, Senator Munyahaji? He's my brother, Senator Onyonka, from the great county of uh, Kisi. In order to say that he has never seen any, any CS in Kisi, yet CS Machoge comes from Kisi. Mr. Speaker, I actually wanted to re-emphasize re the point. I, point. I have actually not even seen Honorable Machogu. Yes, he's in Meru, he's in Moranga, Tarakanithi, he's going to Kwale, and, and it's the responsibility of the office. With, with Honorable Machogu, I wouldn't even raise a query about it for the simple reason that he's running all over, and I see what he's doing in terms of going to the different ministries, I mean different schools and different institutions. I think the portfolio, that is a, a ministry, uh, my, my leader, Mr. Speaker, that I would have wished that it had uh, a deputy minister. Because the Minister of Education is too busy, the minister is all over the place, I don't think he's really having his hands on the cake, as they say. But that is a discussion for the other day. I would like to finish, Mr. Speaker, by saying that let the cabinet ministers in the government today realize that they need to do much more that our expectations are much more, that we know many of them are qualified and many of them can do a good job. But we also know that others are very lazy, Mr. Speaker. So I would like to, to reiterate what Honorable Mandago has said. That fine that uh, Honorable Sosi has brought, we need to make an amendment. Let's change that thing to five million, Honorable Halwale, so that it acts as a deterrence, so that even if, Mr. Speaker, if a minister under CS knows that he's not going to be around, and he has gone for official duty, it is automatic. He should write a letter which is acceptable because we are not idiots. We know that the cabinet uh, minister is traveled somewhere on official business, and, and, and it is important that uh, we, uh, we empathize on that. But this narrative where people just assume that uh, I hear this Honorable Haluale, Mr. Speaker, frequently, Oh, the Senate is, uh, is in Nyumba ya Waze, Akuna Kitu Munafayo, there's nothing you do there. No. This house is serious. And let these ministers realize we'll be very serious with them. Because other than them giving an apology, we are going to start fining people, we are going to start censoring people. And you know, many of them, Mr. Speaker, don't know that under Chapter 6, if somebody comes here and we censor them and ask uh, the, and say that they cannot hold public office, there's nothing they'll do. The president is going to be is the only one who's going, who's going to sympathize with them. But if the president realizes that this guy is lazy, why would he save him? He just fires him, brings another one who can perform. With those very few remarks, Mr. Speaker, I support and let this house be treated with respect and decorum. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Now, uh, he's already concluded and uh, taken his seat, Senator Kathuri. Uh, Honorable Senators, let us end... Uh, this matter.
he's already yielded, so the information certainly is, is. So, honorable senators, I have had your compelling contributions as far as the failure of CSS to attend uh, Senate session for purposes of responding to questions. Now, these compelling contributions that you've made, they would have been relevant if they're made within the context of a motion of censure. In the absence of a, of a motion of censure, what honorable senators are doing is merely to lament. We cannot be reduced to a house of lamentations. This is not the first. Senators are lamenting. This may not be the last. Senators will lament. You need to stop lamenting and take it to the next level. And honorable senators, the next cause of action is provided for under our own standing orders. If you read standing order 51D, it gives the option available to this house where the house feels that a CS has abstained themselves without reasonable cause. Otherwise, for how long are you going to vent your frustrations like you've done today? We have taken two and a half hours venting our frustrations, our pain, our disgust, our disappointment. Next week on Tuesday, if CSS don't appear, we'll continue playing the tape. The other following Tuesday, if they don't appear, you will continue playing the tape. Honorable Senators, that must stop. You have the sword. The sword is not with the Speaker. You have the sword under Standing Order 51D. You can elect to continue lamenting, or you can draw the sword and strike. It's up to you. Let us end it there. Next order. Order number eight, motion. Declaration of cattle rustling and banditry as a national disaster and establishment of a special fund for victims. Resumption of debate. <laughs> 